I check my game metrics every morning, working with teammates remotely, work with publishers on different projects. Here is exactly how my workflow works from morning till evening. Hey everyone, today I'm breaking down my actual day-to-day -day workflow. Here is the real process I use to develop my own games and working on team projects. I've been doing it for 6 years now and my workflow changed a lot. So let's dive in and I'll show you what works for me right now. I normally start my day checking metrics from the previous day. Before I even think about coding or design, I need to know how the games are performing. And by the way, I have a Patreon now, so be sure to check it out for more stuff that I share there. I mostly use game analytics in all my games to track performance. They give me everything I need. I'm looking at several things. How many users downloaded the game, how much time they spent playing, how many EIPs were bought the day before, and add revenue numbers. Sometimes I also check which countries are performing best or where we are seeing drop-offs. These morning checks give me a clear picture of what's working and what needs attention. It's not just about numbers, it helps me to prioritize what to work on that day. If something is broken or metrics dropped suddenly, I know I need to focus there first. When we are working on a team project, we start call discussing current tasks and blockers. We keep this short. The goal is to discuss and then start working, not spend all morning in meetings. Nobody likes long meetings and they rarely help actual development. Throughout the day, we communicate a lot through Discord, which we use for all team communications. Sometimes we jump on calls to solve specific problems quickly. If someone is stuck, we can actually fix it together faster than working alone. When we start a new game, we have longer brainstorming calls. This can be a few hours because we are really shaping the idea. We discuss ideas, shape them up, and importantly, we share a list of games with similar gameplay. Then we play them, all of us. We play them to understand what works and what doesn't, what makes players stay, what's frustrating. This research phase saves us from repeating mistakes that others already made. For task management, we've tried Notion, Trello, Jira, and ClickUp. We tested them all. I like ClickUp and Trello for team projects because they are simple and visual. But for my own projects, just a simple notepad, literally a text file with tasks. Sometimes simple is best. You don't need complicated tools if you're just organizing your own work. We use Plastic CSM for team projects and I use GitHub for my solo work. Version control is essential. It makes life easier and you can track how much each team member contributes to the project. If something breaks, you can go back. If someone makes a change you don't understand, you can see exactly what they did. It's like insurance for your code. For development, we use Unity with Visual Studio Code. I find Visual Studio Code better than regular Visual Studio for our needs. It's faster, lighter, and with the right extensions, it does everything I need for Unity development. We also build debug systems in our games. Basically, a cheat code system. This makes testing much easier and lets us jump to different parts of the content quickly. Instead of playing through 10 levels to test level 11, we just skip there. Uh, we can give ourselves resources, unlock features, Whatever we need to test properly, every game should have this during development. We use a lot of different AI tools throughout development. This is probably the biggest change in our workflow over the last year. I recently got a subscription for Bezi AI for 20 bucks. I'm using it extensively now. It helps me with rapid prototyping and development systems within our games. I also use ChatGPT and Claude for writing scripts. My teammates use Copilot and ChatGPT for coding. AI saves us a lot of time and it's really helpful with bugs and refactoring. For UI elements, I use ChatGPT and Midjourney to generate ideas, then adjust them in Photoshop. I don't just use AI output directly. I generate options, pick the best direction, then customize it to match our style. AI has become a real-time saver in our workflow, especially for initial concepts and coding tasks. For 3D models, we normally buy necessary assets on the Unity Asset Store, then I modify them in 3ds Max. There is no shame in buying assets. We are not a huge studio, we need to be efficient. But we don't use them straight from the store. I modify them to make them unique and fit our game's visual style. Or if we can find something, we just make them. For animations, I use Mixama or create them myself. Mixama is great for standard animations like running, jumping, idle poses. But sometimes we need something specific, and then I animate it uh, myself in 3ds Max. I also change textures or create new ones in Photoshop for those 3D models. 
Getting assets to match your game style is important. Players notice when something looks out of place, even if they can't explain exactly what's wrong. In our team, my main focus is visual part. The look, style, art, animations, and a little bit of game design. For my own games, I do everything. Programming, art, design, marketing. It's more work, but also more creative freedom. Working with the publisher, we have separate meeting calls with the publishing manager apart from our team calls. Usually it's uh, the publishing manager and me. We discuss ideas for future mechanics and analyze current game performance. They bring the market perspective, we bring the development reality. It's a collaboration. Sometimes they want features that sound good but are difficult to implement. Sometimes we want to add things that are technically interesting but won't help the game perform. We find the balance together. Good publishers understand both the market and the development process. They have data from many games. They know what works. That partnership is valuable if you find the right publisher. When we start working on a game, we break it down into different systems that need to be implemented. The high level. Like the core game loop, progression system, monetization, AI, that kind of thing. Then we split those among our team members. Each person owns their part. We don't really have strong management or leadership. It's kind of democracy since we're a small team. Everyone can suggest ideas. Everyone can challenge decisions. This works for us because we're only a few people. If the team was bigger, maybe we'd need more structure. But right now, this works. We normally create a prototype within 2-3 weeks. That's our standard timeline. Then we launch it in a few countries and test user behavior to understand if the game is good or not. We look at retention metrics, session lengths, how far players progress. We also produce a few video creative ads to test the CPI and understand the marketability. Because a fun game that nobody downloads is still a failed game. You need both good gameplay and good marketability. I work from home. I normally start around 8.30 am and I finish around 6 pm. That's my main working time. But sometimes after dinner I spend a few hours working on my own games or playing mobile and Steam games for research. And yes, playing games is a research. I'm analyzing what works, what doesn't, what I keep playing or why I delete the game. On weekends I sometimes work on my own games or I shoot YouTube videos like this one. But I also make time for my family. Balance is important. You can't spring forever. You need sustainable pace. Game development is a marathon. If you burn out, you can't work at all. So take breaks, do other things, spend time away from screen. Your work will be better when you come back to it. So that's my real workflow. From morning metrics to evening work. It's not perfect, but it works for me and my team. The key things start with data, communicate constantly, use version control, leverage AI tools, keep prototypes fast and maintain work-life balance. My workflow today is different from three years ago and it probably will be different three years from now. And what does your workflow look like? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious how other developers structure their day. And if this was helpful, subscribe for more game dev stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.